everybody, welcome to the cabin. We're out here today just for a, a day visit, We're going to do some cooking and spend the afternoon out here. It's late morning now, 11.30. Angel is sort of on restricted exercise for the next week or so, so we can't go for any long hikes. She started to limp, um, not when she was out running and enjoying herself, but uh, um, in the evening, uh, we had been out for a long hike or whatever. She usually sleeps most of the evening, and when she we get up to walk around, she would be limping. Seemed to be favoring her um, right hind leg. Anyway, we went to the vet yesterday, and she had a thorough examination. And the vet doesn't think there's anything serious. Put her on an anti-inflammatory. Said she might have, you know, done something to a muscle or something because. I don't see her all the time if we're out on a hiking trail or even walking around the golf course. She leaves and goes into the into the woods and runs as fast as she can run, enjoying herself, so she might have sprained something. But anyway, not too much heavy exercise for the next week, and she's on an, an anti-inflammatory to see if we can cure this issue. If you noticed at the beginning of the video the uh, thumbnail photograph that I used, uh, that is not taken today. It was taken within the last week. I just like it so much that I decided to use it as the thumbnail for, for this video. We had what turned out to be a surprise snowstorm for me. I, I guess I would have come out here and camped if I'd have known it was going to be that nice or we we're going to get that much snow. It wasn't a great amount of snow, less than a foot of snow. But it was one of those days where there was absolutely no wind and it was just these big heavy flakes that came down all night and it hung in the trees. We didn't have any wind for two or three days. It stayed in the trees afterwards. So I, I took a few photos and, and that's the that's the one that I've one of them that I'm using for, for the thumbnail. Sunny, I'll show you outside eventually, but it's sunny today and uh, it was minus eleven. I think that was the coldest it got early this morning and it has warmed up now to something like minus eight or nine or what's it say? Minus nine. We are, yeah, minus nine. We are warming up a bit, but it's not supposed to get any hotter than that today, if, if minus nine is hot. Our weather has been extremely strange. Two days ago, when we had that rainstorm that melted with all that lovely snow in the photograph, it went to around plus 10 here, which is in Fahrenheit, that's around 50 degrees in January and then zoom right back down to minus nine and now they're saying this weekend it will be relatively mild and more rain. Anyway, I'm going to start cooking my lunch. Uh, I brought my reader out here. I use my iPad to read with so I'll be doing some reading in between in between cooking. So let's get started. I'm going to be making a soup. No particular recipe, just a soup put together of the things that I like. And at first is a nice big onion. If you watched my, I think my, well not my last video, but the last cabin video where I was having problems with the uh, solar power, solar lights over here. Thank everybody very much for all of the helpful comments that you've made. I guess it could be according to the comments it could go in several directions as to what the problem is. I'm tending to think that it's the battery. Um, maybe I'm tending to think that because that's the least expensive thing to replace I guess. Uh, the battery was down then to 11.5 volts or something like that and different people have told me that a fully charged 12 volt battery should um, read 13.5 above 12 even. Well since then I have uh, kept it charging. I haven't even uh, had the uh, little light thing that comes on and tells you how much the battery is charged, 11.5 or whatever. I've even had that part shut off, so that isn't using any energy, and it has improved. It was 11.5 or something earlier. I'm running one of the lights now, the one over this table, and it 
it's reading 12.2 so I can expect it to go out I guess soon I uh, think perhaps the battery, well, I know the battery got way down lower than it should have and then also in the summertime it just continually charges when we have lots of good sunshine and I don't think that's good for it either it never gets you know depleted I'm not out here enough to use it so that could be the issue that's the one I'm looking at right now anyway I'm using my South African poiki cast iron pot to make my soup in this one was not made in South Africa but they originate in South Africa that's just a little vegetable oil even though it's a soup I like to start by sauteing the onions a bit it releases a lot of their flavor I guess you can see, I uh, see the wooden bucket down here. I had someone comment on that, want to know if it actually was a, a wooden a wooden bucket. I've used it for many things. Sometimes I put a bag in it and use it as a, a, a trash can, you know, paper can, whatever. Uh, that came from the uh, Ross Farm Museum in New Ross, Nova Scotia. And it was made right there at the at the farm. They have coopers that make barrels and such. I've never used it for water or anything. I, it's more decorative for me. With the pepper here, I guess. those cook for a minute or two before I add some water. I love my little wood stove and there were several comments on that in the last cabin video and it's a yodel um, 605 I'm not certain anyway it's if you go to uh, yodel.com they're made in uh, Norway right I think but they're sold in Canada and the United States both I love the thing, it's the first time I've ever had one that you can actually use the top as a cooking surface and it's just the right size for the cabin here and it warms things up in here quite quickly. I'll add some water now, I guess. And this, I pre-measured everything before I came out here. This is a mixture that I've made up at the house. Well, black beans on top there. A half a cup of black beans. And this is a half cup of a soup mix that you can buy here in Canada. Um, in the Atlantic region, you would buy it at uh, Superstore. And up in Ontario and other parts of the country, I think you would buy it at Loblaws. It's one of their in-store items they call President's Choice. Uh, it's a mixture of pearl barley, rice, uh, split yellow peas, split green peas, and red lentils. Uh, and as you probably know already if you've been watching my videos, I am a vegetarian. So the rice and black beans combine, that produces a complete protein. So that's one way of getting my protein out of today's meal. Plus, I love all these. I love barley and the other the lentils and things also. I like them very much. The black rice will probably turn the soup quite dark color, but I like black beans as well. So I'll put those in now, even though the water hasn't come to a boil yet. But I'll come back and stir it occasionally. Put the cover on so it will come to a boil quicker. The dessert is going to be rice pudding. At least I hope it's going to be rice pudding. The first thing you've got to do is cook some rice. That's a cup and a half of boiling water, to which I'm adding three quarters of a cup 
white rice, just a long grain white rice. Cover that and turn the heat down if possible. And simmer for about 20 minutes. I do have a link that I can put up for the rice pudding. I'll put that at the bottom. Obviously there's no link for the soup. It's just a make-as-you-go soup. And I'm going to be cooking a Scottish brown bread. Hopefully in the camp oven here. Uh, I can probably write that out and put it below the video. It's from a book. I'll show you the book. But, uh, can't give you a link to a book, I guess, so I, I will probably type that out and, and put it down below the video. But right now we're making a rice pudding. So the rice has cooked down. Uh, it's been cooking for about 15 minutes, I guess. Cooked down so that it's absorbed all of the water. Now I'm going to add a cup and a half of milk. quarter of a teaspoon of salt and a third of a cup of white sugar and as I pre-measured all this before I left the house and that gets cooked down on medium so a lot of the liquid is gone and it has become quite creamy. Well, the rice, milk and sugar mixture has been bubbling away for about 20 minutes. And it has thickened up, thickened up quite a bit. Some of the things that I'm going to add shortly now will make it thicken even more. And it will continue to thicken as it cools. You eat rice pudding cold, at least I do. Two-thirds of a cup of golden raisins, and you could use any kind of raisin that you like. The recipe called for golden raisins, and I just happen to have some in the house, so I'm using golden ones. And a half cup of milk with an egg beaten up in it. One whole egg. And this gets stirred so to let it come back to the simmer just to cook the egg which will further thicken it. But it only goes on here now for another couple of minutes and then you bring it off the heat to add the last couple of ingredients. So I'll bring you back at that point. Well, that has made it really quite thick and creamy, but as I said, as it cools, it'll get even thicker. And the last two ingredients are a tablespoon of butter. It was already salt added, so I'm using a non-salted butter. Just stir that in until it melts. And a half teaspoon of vanilla. I'm using my favorite vanilla paste here with the bean seeds and everything else in it. If I can get it to pour. There it comes. I'm not going to measure it. I'm just eyeballing it. I like the flavor of vanilla so it doesn't really matter. I'll continue stirring that and then I will put it in my huge refrigerator outside here on the little deck where it will cool down quite quickly. soup has been bubbling away for about an hour and it's starting to get fairly thick. The beans are pretty well cooked. I presume the other stuff is the rice and the barley and whatever. That was a bottle of my homemade tomato sauce. Give it a little more flavor. The 
soon would be time to add other vegetables and things to it. Not right yet. I just realized I'm using at least two of my Christmas gifts out here, so I'll do a little bragging about what Santa Claus brought me, I guess. These three little Scottish cookbooks are a gem. Uh, lovely recipes in them. And the illustrations are copies of paintings watercolors or oils or whatever, but both of the little books are full of, of that kind of illustration. Real treasure, a gift that I really appreciate, and the uh, Scottish brown bread that I'm going to make comes out of this one. Scottish Tea Time Recipes, we'll be doing that in just a moment. And then I got a lovely knife. This is the knife that I got for Christmas, however you pronounce Wustoff or something like that. Made in Germany excellent knife. I mean, it really, I've never had one like it at the house before, and it, it holds its edge, it cuts, and these scooped out areas make it go down through things so easily. And these I have been using out here at the cabin ever since I've had the cabin, and they are a cheap knockoff, and I mean cheap. There's no comparison between those two knives. This is a real cheap steel that's very hard to get sharp. But I mean, I paid practically nothing for them. But obviously, it was meant to to look like the real thing here. They call these ones Think Think. They're from Think Kitchen. It doesn't say where they're made, but I suspect they're made somewhere in Asia. Well, let's move on, and we will start making the Scottish bread. I guess I should be honest right off the bat. This is sort of my version of the Scottish brown bread. I have made a couple of substitutions, but I think it will turn out much the same thing. Uh, here, when we refer to a brown bread, it's usually a bread that has molasses in it, which has turned it brown, and uh, a bread that is whole wheat, we refer to it as whole wheat rather than being brown. But this, uh, there isn't any molasses or anything in it that would turn this brown. It's the, it's the flours that are used and it is supposed to be six ounces of a whole meal, whole wheat flour, and four ounces of white flour. Well, I had whole wheat flour, but I decided to use um, multigrain, which is a whole wheat flour, uh, but it has other grains mixed in with it. So there's six ounces of multigrain flour and four ounces of white flour. And to that you add um, where am I going here? A teaspoon of bicarbonate of soda, we just call that baking soda here, and a teaspoon of cream of tartar. So I have both of those out here, I guess. Might be a bit getting into the cream of tartar. It's a new one, I haven't opened it yet. There's a teaspoon of bicarbonate of soda. easier than I thought it would. There's a teaspoon of cream of tartar. Just combine everything there. Now a tablespoon of golden syrup. If we have golden syrup here in this country, I don't think I've ever seen it. I know I've seen it in many English recipes, and perhaps it is available, I've just never seen it. I'm substituting a tablespoon of corn syrup. Same idea, I would think. I think it's just basically to get a sweetener in there. syrup tastes good. Combine that a bit. A quarter pint of milk, which is, to our way of thinking, is a bit different. Uh, we would have said a half cup of milk, I guess. Uh, a pint is, is two cups, so a quarter of a pint is a half a cup of milk. And you add enough of that just to make a soft dough. I 
I brought extra flour out for it. You don't need this very much, just basically to shape it. But If I need it, I have some extra flour. I also have extra milk if I need it. Because I'm not using the whole wheat, I'm using the, the multigrain, it might absorb the milk differently. and see what kind of a mess I can make. The table making strange noises here. This is a table that uh, will fold flat against the wall. And it does have fairly good support, but it doesn't take much to get it sort of moving when you don't want it to move. Well, I think I might add just a bit more milk. to turn it out on a floured surface here and shape it into a loaf. I had forgotten to add a pinch of salt so I just sprinkled that on it. Won't be mixed in as well as it should be I guess. And You don't want to knead it very much just enough to shape it. It'll make it kind of tough I guess if you knead it a lot. Usually I have a problem with the Coleman stamp camp oven getting it hot enough. <laughs> Today it's too hot. It's supposed to cook for about 50 minutes at 325 degrees Fahrenheit. So I'm having a hard job regulating the, the oven down to that. But Once I get it somewhere in that area I'll bring you back and we'll put this in the oven. Still having trouble getting the oven down cool enough, at least according to the oven thermometer that I have in there. It's still over 400 degrees, but I'll have to go with it, I guess, see what happens. It suggests putting a piece of foil over the top of it for the first part of the bacon, so the top won't get too brown. And it should be in there for about 50 minutes maybe less time with the heat that I've got in the oven. I'm preparing a few more vegetables to go in the soup. My mushrooms don't all roll away here. <laughs> Roly-poly mushrooms. A couple of sticks of celery. Some of these so-called baby carrots, I'm sure somebody has done a, a video that explains how they're made. There's all those other how-to videos on television, which I usually when I find them I enjoy learning how something was done, but these are not baby carrots. They're full-size carrots that some machine pairs them down until they're this size. I like them, I like because I like to eat them raw, and I quite often buy them to do like this to eat as a cooked carrot. But I'm just curious as to how it's done and what do they do with all the parts of the carrot that are left over after you shave it down and it becomes this size. I should look. I'll bet it's on YouTube somewhere, right? These are cremini mushrooms and I'm just going to quarter them. I won't put those in at the same time that I put the carrots and celery in. They don't 
take that long to cook. the final mushroom. And I'm going to add about half of this hot chili. Uh, I grew four or five, at least four different varieties last summer. I'm really not certain which one that is. It could be even what I grew for Thai chilies. For years I've grown my own Thai chilies and the ones that I grew this year were like this which is about, oh heavens, three times anyway if not four times the size of a Thai chili. I assume that mine must have cross-pollinated with something last year. I uh, saved my own seeds and they came out of the seeds came out of the tiny Thai chilies but when they grew they're at least this size may not be a Thai chili it could be one of the other ones that I grew. Uh, Aleppo for one was about that size I guess but they're nice and hot I like a little heat in something but I won't use the whole of it I'll use about half of it in the soup. Well, the soup has just come back to the boil after I added that uh, bottle of my own tomato sauce, I uh, also added a little water later on because it was starting to get fairly thick. So that's the celery and the carrot and the hot chili. I think I saw one piece of mushroom go in there. I let those cook for a while before I add the add the mushrooms. But at this time, I'm also going to add some salt. I didn't add the salt earlier, because if you add salt to beans, they never get soft. They, uh, you can cook them forever, and they're still a little on the tough side. So I wait until the beans are mostly cooked before I add any salt. cooking. The bread's baking. <laughs> Angel's getting a bit impatient and will sit in here all day. She'd like to get out for some exercise. But I've got a little bit of time here now where I can sit down and do a little reading. It's a baby. That's a girl. It's a pretty girl right there, aren't ya? I think in my last video I just started Dan Brown's book, my last video from the cabin. This shows you how slow a reader I am. I'm finishing it today. I've really enjoyed it. It's been quite good, as I always uh, do for Dan Brown's book. I like them. He actually, I think I mentioned that I had a friend who knew him when he was a student at Exeter in, in, uh, in the U.S., in New England, um, Vermont or New Hampshire now. I'm not sure which that is. He doesn't mention that he was a student at Exeter, but he brings up Exeter and has one of the characters in this book, uh, was a, an alumnus of Exeter. So. Just a few pages left to go and we have that finished. So I'll bring you back when it's time to do a little more on the soup and check on that loaf of bread. I did read the instructions a little better and it, it stays in there for 50 minutes with the foil over the top and then you take it out, for, take the foil off and put it in, leave it in there for another 10 minutes to brown a bit more. So altogether it cooks for about an hour at 325. The last time I checked, I did have it down to 350, so that's that's pretty close. You can't regulate that uh, camp oven any any better than that. And you're satisfied you've got it down where it's not going to burn it up anyway. So I'll bring you back in just a few minutes' time. Well, the carrots and the celery have been bubbling away for 20 minutes or so. Well, I'll add the final vegetable, the mushrooms. Give them a little stir. About 10 minutes or so they should be cooked. In the meantime, I'm going to make some dumplings to go in there. I'm making dumplings, but I'm cheating. <laughs> There's a product here called Bisquick. 
If you're watching from someplace else in the world other than North America, this is in Canada, I assume it's probably in the U.S. Um, it's like self-rising flour, but it's gone a step further. It also has the fat included. So there's the leavening, either baking powder or baking soda, salt. I think this also has cornstarch in it. And then it has a, a, a fat, a vegetable oil that's been hydrogenized or whatever you want to call it so that it's in a powder form or mixes in with this powder form anyway and you can make many things as you saw on the package there pancakes waffles you can use it as a base for muffins and all that sort of thing I, I like to have it in the house you never know when it might come in handy the full recipe for uh, dumplings is two cups and of the mix and two-thirds of a cup of um, milk. So I've cut it in half, a cup of the mix and a third of a cup of, of milk. I'll just mix these up and when I think those mushrooms are, are cooked enough I'll add some to the to the soup. It'll thicken the soup a bit as well, uh, which is what I always liked about dumplings. <laughs> it was an ongoing debate when I was growing up. Uh, I would Every time my mother made a beef stew, I wasn't a vegetarian then, I loved beef stew, but I wanted dumplings with it. And she didn't care for them because it thickened it, and that's what I liked about it, because it thickened it. So every once in a while she would say, just to please you, I'm making dumplings. So... <laughs> always liked them for some reason. Sort of a bread. I like bread, of course. So Bring you back when they go in. Well, the bread has been in there for at least 50 minutes. I didn't really mark down the time when I started. And I've managed to get the temperature just where it's supposed to be, I guess, at 325. I will remove the foil. It has risen a bit, if you can see that or not. Yeah, I guess you can see a little bit of it there. But it isn't very brown, so I'll let it go for 10 minutes or so without the foil. Hopefully it'll brown up a bit. I have meant to spell the word on several occasions, and I think of it every time that I shut the camera off. It is pronounced poiki, and it's an Afrikaans word from South Africa. But it is spelled P-O-T-J-I-E. And in their language, the Afrikaans language, it's pronounced poiki. This is called a flat poiki because it has a flat bottom. Many, many styles of them, but if you are interested and want to find out how much they are or where you can get them, I think I got this one on Amazon, so I'm sure if you Google poiki on Amazon, you'll come up with them. There are ones on legs that you would use over charcoal or a fire or whatever, and there are ones with rounded bottoms that you hang over a fire. So There are many different styles and sizes of them. This, I think, is about the smallest. It's called a number one. I'm not quite sure how many quarts or whatever. No, I wouldn't hold much more than a gallon. I don't think four quarts. Maybe only three. But, uh, I enjoy using it. I like using cast iron anyway. So, we'll now put a few dumplings in there. Try not to get them too large. The instructions are to cook it for 10 minutes with the cover off, and then 10 minutes with the cover on. It was boiling just a minute ago. I guess it's starting to come back to a boil. Just before I started taking this clip, I had the cover off and, and stirred it around a bit so nothing was touching on the bottom but it always brings it off the boil well I think that's enough I won't use it all enough left for maybe a couple more but I think that's enough for that size so bring you back and show you what they look like after they've been there for 10 minutes well they have risen in the 10 minutes that they've been in there without a cover but it didn't really return to the boil. It doesn't want to boil with the cover off, I guess. Then so we'll cover them and let them go for another 10 minutes and see what they look like. Well, it 
it's sort of a light brown, I guess. It said it shouldn't be too dark. It certainly isn't too dark. I just hope it's done all the way through. To cool. And I'll cut it when the meal's ready. Well, I've got to cut off a bit of the end of this and give it a try. It's still nice and warm. say it's done through and through. The butter is a bit cold here. Uh, butter is a bit cold on the table. The bread is still warm so it's melting the butter a bit. It's got a nice crispy outer crust. Top of the mouthful, but that's very nice. I like the Scottish brown bread, and it is sort of a light color brown, even though I didn't use complete whole wheat. Well, you're not supposed to, you're supposed to have some white wheat in with it, but white flour, but I used the multi grain. It's quite hearty, I like it. I think it'll go quite well with the soup. It's had lots of time to steam been boiling away gently so I will say that they are done I'll take that one there it seems to be the easiest one to get I guess you over at the table. Well I guess from what I can see across the room in the screen I at least have part of a head. It's hard to get this adjusted correctly in here in the small room. Yeah I think the dumplings are done quite nicely. And it did thicken the soup just a little bit. It's almost like a gravy. flavor and I'm finding a bit of heat but I thought there would be more heat from that that chili. Maybe I should have used the whole chili I guess. But all together it's tasting quite nice. And the the uh, black beans along with the tomato sauce instead of it being a very dark almost black base it's a it's a nice brown color. Vegetables are done just the way I like them. They're not not all mushy. They've still got a little texture left. And for some reason today I've been able to regulate the stove properly. I've been here now for about four hours, I guess. And I burnt quite a bit of I didn't count how many of the bio bricks I burnt, but quite a few of them. And it hasn't got unbearably hot in here, and uh, I've been able to use the, the stove to cook, as well as the, the gas stove to do the bread. I like that bread. It has a nice crunchy crust and a soft interior. Mm. You don't need to watch me eat the entire meal. I'll bring you back when I have my rice pudding for dessert. A cup of green tea. Well, 
Well, the rice pudding is really nicely chilled. Not frozen, but really nicely chilled. It's been out on the little deck or doorstep, whatever you want to call it, outside of the cabin ever since I made it. And as you can see, as it cooled down, it really thickened up nicely. Can't wait to try it. I don't make rice pudding all that often, but I've always really liked it. Uh, I think other ways I've made it before, you baked it in the oven. I'm quite sure I've made it so that you could bake it in the oven, but this particular recipe that I found was a, a stove top recipe. <clears throat> and I knew the oven would be in use baking the bread. So. Mm. Very good. Creamy, cold, the raisins. You can taste the vanilla. It has a nice texture to it. Mm. Not that difficult to make, but well worth the effort. I like that. Very nice. Something that I've been meaning to mention. All afternoon I've been using the, the solar lights. Only one at a time. It's been quite a bright sunny day, but in the winter time with the sun still quite low in the sky to get enough light in here to do video, I like to have a light on. I've had no problem with them at all, just using one at a time, as I said, and the charge has stayed above 12 volts. I think it was up to 12.6 or something like that once with the sun shining on it, but after the sun left it's 12.2, 12.3, so maybe the battery is going to recover, I don't know. I'll leave it charging anyway. Working in the daytime, I don't know what would have happened. I was out here at night without any any sunshine, you know, adding to it. Well, I'm going to finish my dessert, and then we'll close this little video down. Well, I hope you enjoyed this little visit to the cabin. Thank you for stopping by, so to speak. Just about to start packing things up and go back over to the house. I have a few things yet to do this afternoon. I forgot to mention that the rice pudding um, was from a suggestion from Jason, one of my more loyal subscribers. He said his mother would like to know how I make rice pudding. So I found this recipe and made this recipe for Jason. I probably should not mention where he's from because I'll get it wrong. Somewhere in the Persian Gulf, I think Bahrain. I think he's told me before, but anyway, Jason, the rice pudding was, was for you and your mother, and I hope you make it and enjoy it. Well, on the way back over to the house, I'll give you a look back at the cabin, so you can see how little snow there is left. Things are still white, but I meant to take a shot out through a window, but I forgot to do it all day, so one more shot before the thing closes down here. I'll show you what it looks like outside with the remaining snow. Things are white, and after that rain, which made the snow, you know, wet and heavy, then it come off cold like this. It's got a really heavy crust on it. You can walk right across the top of it, no problem, with, without sinking down in it. With the wind, and it's minus six out here right now, and after having spent the last several hours in the warm cabin, it really feels cold out here. But that gives you some idea of the little bit of snow that's left. There's nothing in the trees. The picture that I showed at the beginning with the thumbnail, the trees were full of snow. And that has all come down, melted. Well, thank you very much for watching this little cooking episode at the cabin. I hope you enjoyed it.